Hi, gamers. Thank you so much for joining us. I have Setsu here, an amazing Twitch streamer and Final Fantasy XIV player, here to talk about how video games have had a positive influence on their life. Uh, Setsu, did you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, my name is Setsunian17. I am what I would like, I would like to call myself a variety streamer, but at this point, I'm so heavily addicted to Final Fantasy that I don't know if I can have that title anymore. <laughs> uh, but I'd like to say I'm, I am, I am what my friends would like to call a resident for Final Fantasy 14 player, as well as a glamour addict in game I have made. It's gotten so bad that my friend decided to make a counter for me and uh, it just ticked over 160 glams uh, the other day. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and that started at like 60 earlier this year, I think. Maybe. How do you handle just 20 glamour plates? Uh, pain. <laughs> suffering. It's... There is one glam plate or two glam plates that are like I can swap at will. But every other one is tied up to... I have one specifically for White Mage, uh, Sage, Astro, like, you know, and and... Also, you know that 800 glamour uh, dresser limit that they introduced? Yeah. Yeah, I'm the maxed. bane of my the bane of my existence. Yeah. I was uh, maxed before it and then I maxed it immediately after we got it. <laughs> Mine actually took a while, but yeah, no, uh the thank goodness they decided to do the change where the online store purchases can go into the armoire because that saved me a whole 15 slots <laughs> yeah no going through that there were some items i thought were going to become armor items that didn't like the giant heads like the frog head and the elephant head and stuff <sighs> that's yeah yeah i feel the pain mm -hmm. okay uh can you tell us about your earliest memories of playing video games there were two things because i can't exactly remember when they were but I know one of the things was uh, we used to have those CDs that you could install like Windows games on ages ago. So we had one of my earliest things was playing these various entertainment pack games on my uh, we actually had it up until I think this year we had our Windows 95 computer that I used to play games on all the time. So it was playing games like that, like early Sonic games, like original Sonic or Sonic 3 and Knuckles, I think was one of the ones I definitely have one of the clearest memories of playing like mm -hmm. as a kid. And it was, uh, there were times where I've gone back to some of those games and floundered around and I'm like, how did I, how did any of this make sense as a kid? Because I can't do any of this now. <laughs> like the skills are not there. How did this work? <laughs> Yeah, those, those, those were definitely some of the things. And uh, it was still impressive to me before we got rid of that Windows 95 computer. I actually booted it up one last time. It's still 20 some odd years later kicked. It still worked. Yeah, they don't make things like they used to. No, they definitely don't. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. How have video games influenced your personal interests and hobbies? I, I definitely think in terms of because I have ADHD and I like collecting or, you know, there's the hyper fixation of the month, the week, every so often. Right. Uh, it's definitely majorly influenced with what type of things I've collected. So I have a phase where I collected a crap ton of amiibos to Funko pops of video game series to, I have various figures. Um, like I have two play arts, Kai figures of final fantasy characters that are my favorite. I've, you know, I collected my favorite final fantasy series, uh, on every uh, existing platform possible. So I had it on 360, PS3, and PC because <laughs> it's it's also what type of content I consume, right? You know, from watching various TV shows or something like that to now I, you know, I watch certain YouTube channels who uh, the Twitch streamers I've found or interacted with, right? It's It's changed which, what things I focus on or what I like try to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's definitely one of those things of I no, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna ramble. Okay, no worries. <laughs> there's, there's the end of it. <laughs> there you go. How have video games impacted your social life and relationships? Um it's expanded. Like I owe so much to video games. Like I would not have a 
you know, if you want a a a um a perfect example of like you know of it affecting my social life, right? I when I first started this game, I maybe had a couple of close friends on my Final Fantasy 14 friends list. Um I maybe had five or six people. And I think now if I look in game, uh, I have, a hundred, I think it's like 165 or something like that. It's still updating. 169. There we go. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've met so many people because of, of video games to where I, you know, I met some of my closest friends through, um, Halo 3, you know, I, I met a core group of friends that I played Halo 3 up until, you know, the end of its lifespan, even into Halo 4. Um, I met some of my closest friends through a random LFG for a certain exotic weapon in Destiny 2. Mm -hmm. And that one person led me to their friend who led me to their whole, turns out, a whole chunk of their office played Destiny, the original Destiny. And I... I like it's just I don't know if I'd trade any of it for the world like these like I've met so many of people who I've either met in person now or I mean another great example is the my live 2d model right mm -hmm. I found this I they're now my closest one of my closest friends and I found them because of video games because I was randomly perusing twitch and found someone who streamed on primal which is my home data center. And it had I not, you know, I would never have met all the people I know there. I wouldn't have had this model, right? Had I not gotten to meet people because of video games. So I think it's one of those things of maybe IRL social life has taken maybe a hit, I guess, question mark. But at the same time, <laughs> I feel like anybody now, I, you know, a lot of my life exists online. Mm hmm. So I don't know if I've never really, I've never really considered it to be like a hindrance. I've considered it to be more of a benefit than anything. No, absolutely. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, and it, and it is crazy to think about. I remember pre Endwalker, um, they had the whale release. And I was contemplating oh. getting it because it was on sale. And I was thinking to myself, because right, right. this was prior to streaming, I'm like, I'll never know seven people that I'll be partied with at the same time. <laughs> like, there's no way that I could possibly justify this purchase. So I didn't buy it. Uh, and then, yeah, fast forward, uh, you know, a couple of years and suddenly, yeah, the friends list, it takes minutes to load. And I'm wishing I had purchased the way. <laughs> yeah. It's so great. It's like, I feel like, and this ties in, I know, into a later question. I think it's one of those things of video games. I feel like a lot, especially with the way games are built now, they tie, bring people together more than anything. And I feel like the whole idea behind, you know, I, the whole notion of video games, you know, just being a phase or for kids or, you know, you'll grow out of them or why are you still playing them in whatever X age it's, I feel like a lot of that stuff's just gone by the wayside because I, especially because of things like YouTube and Twitch, right. People are kind of forced to acknowledge that there's, there's a market. There's a reason why this stuff exists and it's not going to go away any, anytime soon. Have you ever used skills or strategies learned from video games in real life situations? I, this is one of the ones I struggled on, but I think one of the things I, I ended up determining was I feel like my ability to problem solve and break mm -hmm. tasks down, right? Because you think about it, right? Like objectives in a quest or something like that, right? I'll say if it's a multi-parter, it has grab these things or fight this enemy and go here right? Taking a big task. And a lot of times what I do is I'll take a task I have at work or something like that. And I'll break it down to, okay, here's, here's this list of things. Let me prioritize, you know, mm -hmm. prioritize this and work it in this way. Or, or, uh, I think a great way was one time we, uh, I used to work at a retail store and we had to reorganize a bunch of stuff to make room for a bunch of holiday freight that was coming in. 
And I showed my boss at the end of the day this sheet of paper I had that showed how I was going to rearrange, condense, and just arrange palettes to the point where I could create enough palette spaces for all the stuff they needed. And it was so impressive that my boss was like, can I have this? I'm going to send this to my boss. <laughs> because of, because it was one, but like, you know, it's one of those things of, I think it's also one of those things of, because especially like with video games and other things like that, right? Where you have to react quickly to a situation, quickly assess and do stuff. It's been one of those things of when stuff got stressful, I remember I it was very quickly one of those things of not for any reason like a power grab or anything like that. But there's a lot of times where my bosses almost would leave me alone or go, what do you need? And I'd grab everybody and go, OK, here's what you're doing. Here's what you're doing. Here's what you're doing. Let's bang. Let's knock this out. And we get we get it, our shipping quota done by the, you know, sometimes by like 30 seconds. But it was done and we were able to take care of everything. But. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, that sounds like something you would absolutely pick up being a savage trader for sure. <laughs> you, you're not thinking oh. about this step. You're thinking three steps ahead. Yeah. You're at, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's funny. You should mention that. Uh, I can tell if this tells you how much I've done it over this this current tier, which is like actually my first like active tier, like going into a savage, um, I can tell I'm where I'm at in a fight based on what skill I'm using. Wow. Or if something's not available, I go, oh, I must have activated something a little <laughs> too late. That's not there when it normally is. And yeah, I, 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 it's gotten to the point where I can that song and dance is just like, yep, yeah, okay, we're. All right. Yep. We're at that part of the fight. I've already hit this pointer. It's been, it's been so much fun. I would, I would love to eventually get to that point. I have announced to my community, I will be Savage Reinig at the beginning of 8.0. Oh, so that's exciting. <laughs> do you know what do you are? Do you have a, do you have a job that you're like, like either like, do you want to be a DPS healer tank or like, do you have a specific okay. job in question? So here, do. here's where I'm at. My two mains right now are Dragoon and Astro. So I'm going to okay. say I don't have a job until after Dawn Trail launches because I don't know what's going to happen to that's, either of those classes. See, that's well, uh, my condolences on the Astro cause they're definitely going to touch it again. Yeah. Uh, I should know I have uh, one of my good friends uh, and our one of my static kill healers is an Astro mm. and they're just anticipating it being changed already. Yeah. They're already they're already resigning themselves to it changing. Uh, but as far as if I had to cons if you had to ask me what my main is, uh, I can make it incredibly obvious to you. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> I am a red mage main till I die. Uh, though you would not believe that if you ever saw me in raid, because I am currently a warrior. Oh wow! Uh, but I started okay. the tier as a gunbreaker, actually. That's okay. Really confusing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I. It's, uh, and oh, it's going to get more interesting. Uh, a couple of our static mates are going to. We're forming a group for. We're going to try to attempt an ultimate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to be a white mage. Okay, so you are a person of many skills. I it's one of those things of it's I am comfortable on Red Mage. So when I started the Savage tier, I'm like, I want to tank because tanking is not something I've done in hard content like this, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's not something I've done. So I want to I want to challenge myself, right? I want to conquer this mountain and prove that I can do it to myself that I can do this, right? And that's where where healing comes into too, right? Because right now at this point, healing's the last hurdle I have of confidence. Because I can heal okay in a dungeon, but there are definitely times where I I pay attention to things more show more so than I should, or I'm overhealing because I'm worried about if there's even a one percent loss on health. You know, it it becomes I worry, I panic, but um, it's. Yeah, it's definitely just one of those things of I want to I want to do it all because I feel like if I can do it all, then there's nothing that then I can go into any fight and go, what do you need? Because that's really where it's always 
boiled down to is because I started off as a red mage, right? And if we want to do any content, I'm like, well, I only feel comfortable on red mage. So I, you know, I'm locking people out of a right. class slot or, I mean, unsynced older content doesn't really matter about party makeup, but current tier stuff, right? It was one of those things of I had to do a certain job because that was what I was comfortable with. Yep. And yep. so, yeah, that's where I've been. Cool. Uh, how do you think video games have evolved over time and how has that impacted your experience with them? I mean, you want to talk about just overall trends, right? We started off with growing up, right? As games were complete, right? Ship them, they were done. Now, occasionally, maybe they'll, like, I know there's, for example, right? Like, there'd be, I know one of the games that you bought I think I didn't buy twice, but I bought the other version of it was a racing game called Midnight Club three. But there was a I think it was called the dub edition remix or something like that. And that was a game that was a different version of the game that came with an extra area to do. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> I, I, I got totally, you're totally fine. I just like the fact that I can see it slowly off screen. Just closer, <laughs> Thank closer. You. Do not disturb the recording. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I, I'm oh. very sorry for interrupting. No, Go on. <laughs> Listen, if that was enough to unnerve me, I think you have another thing coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I, you know, it, games were complete, and if there was stuff to be added, right, you'd release a whole brand new game with additional content, and then. You know, then you transition to, I think, one of my more intimate memories is Xbox 360 Call of Duties and uh, Halo Halo games, right? Where map packs all of a sudden were introduced, right? And to me, that's, I think, overall, with the way games have shifted is never been a problem. It's how stuff's implemented, right? Because, I mean, I'm guilty of buying cosmetic glam items on 14 all the time, right? Or I mm -hmm. actually bought a Fantasia for my one alt, like to change some aspect of them. And it it's always kind of just been one of those things where we it I feel like they've it's just changed how we interact with them, right? Because all of a sudden now instead of just playing a game completing it putting it down moving on now all of a sudden a lot of times games are designed around battle passes and skins and limited exclusive events stuff to keep you in and interested right and mm -hmm. done right i mean i mean i think done perfectly right now you want to talk about a really recent one right i don't know if you've done the fall guys event in 14 at the moment oh but yeah if you've played normal Fall Guys, mm -hmm. it feels like Fall Guys. And that is one of the most impressive things to me is you can, and that's a thing where I don't mind certain types of events because you can tell care was put in to make this feel authentic. And it's not just, a, oh, adding it because we can make money off this or anything like that. It's we're adding this. And now it's actually a fun way to link these two games together um yeah no i mean that's a really good point like when they announced the collab i and probably a great deal of other people were anticipating something like oh well it's a fall guys like course with the gate label slapped on it uh <laughs> sort of thing you know we i i certainly was not imagining the whole like hud like screen appearance just that came out as a mumble but <laughs> The, the like uh intermission screens and everything like so right. detailed yeah or or about the fact that when you accepted the quest it was in fall guys font with the fall guys music mm -hmm. or like you think about the monster hunter event that's obviously still in game mm -hmm. there right mm -hmm. like everything surrounding that it's their music it's duty action like it feels like a monster hunter hunt to a degree right like it it it's I don't know, it's there's so many interesting ways games have I think evolved also the degree of storytelling and realism and emotion that can be brought into a game, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, some advent of the improvement of graphics and real and in the way things are looked right. Like you can, I mean, you can see it over the course of 14's life or the course of 
each subsequent main story Final Fantasy game, right? Where like 13 is one of my favorite games and I love it to death. But like when I went into 15, holy crap, like the like I remember doing the demo for uh, 15, the original one that came with Final Fantasy Type Zero. And yep. I was just I did the Ramu summon for the first time by like complete accident. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> like this was so cool. Like it, I don't know, it's just one of those things of there's, or I, and I haven't touched it yet. I have the game and I feel so bad, but 16, I've heard nothing but like rave reviews about 16, right? I've heard, oh, how, it's amazing. How amazing. I've heard the story's amazing. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of the cutscenes and, or I've heard how I think it was the main character with, Clive, right? I think he was mm -hmm. able to process a lot of things using, I think, Clive as a character. It's like there's so many amazing things where it's like you could, I feel like with over time, stuff's just gotten to the point where the storytelling is almost better than you could get in a movie or a TV series with, with, with stuff in video games because you can have so much more emotion in these in these characters because the animation allows you mm -hmm. to ex, you know to to slightly exaggerate these things but to make it feel just that much more real yeah no and pair that with uh Sokin's music oh, and God. like 50 to 60 hours of game play compared to a two or three hour movie and you have an experience that absolutely leaves an indelible mark like do you want to talk like there were there was a time where after you want to talk about a perfect example of like music impacting you right mm -hmm. uh once i did the coils of bahamut i went through and my friend had linked me a video of just the answers song mm -hmm. with the lyrics and given an ex given me an explanation as to what the story behind that song is about and holy crap that song still gets me emotional to this day um i know i choked up when i heard uh i think it was dragon song the ending song where you right before you fight uh nidhogg in at the end of heaven's ward that piano is so it's it's the ability of the music especially in this game or in a lot of games mm -hmm. to convey and really just amplify the emotions of everything. It just sends shivers through my spine sometimes. <laughs> you know, you get those tank, your hair raises up, tingles on your arm, everything. Like it just. Yeah. Oh. And and that, I, I it, my theory is that's why Final Fantasy XI is still being played as an MMO today. Which, and that's why Final Fantasy XIV is going to blew, last another 20 years. It like, blew my mind learning about that because there's a streamer I watch. Um, I think by, their, by the name of Faye. And I, I've watched them mostly for 14 content. Um, but I saw them one time year, like a while ago, stream 11. And I'm just like, I was so fascinated because I'd never seen 11 before. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, this is still going. This is still alive. And I remember talking to a friend who, you know, still has his character and goes, yeah, no, it's. His character in 14 is just a, you know, a recreation of his character that was in 11. And it. Yeah, it's. I also, I think for 14's credit, the fact that you can find so many articles and interviews where, Yo where Yoshi P is just like, if you want to step away from the game and cancel the subscription till there's something that you want, you want to sub back for, go ahead. Because I feel like so many games, and this is a great thing to tie back into the question, right? Is so many games over time now, it's like, it feels like you have to do this. You have to keep up with it. You have to do this stuff. You can't stop playing it for a single second. Otherwise, you're going to get behind. It ends up becoming, and that's what's burnt me out on so many games, is games started becoming, feeling like a job. Like, I have to do this. Whereas, I mean, I haven't gotten rid of my 14 subscription since I originally bought it, but 14's been one of those games where if I feel like just, I know there's one day where I wasn't feeling particularly great, but I just wanted to still be in the game. So I sat in old char at the last stand and just listened to the music. That's all I did. 
I chatted with, you know, on someone's Twitch chat and I just had 14 playing music in the background. And that was enough for me that day. That's it. There's so much to do in this game that there's always some, there's always something for you to go back to if, if keeping up with dailies or relic grinding or something like that just isn't your shit. There's going to be something yeah. in the game or you can find something else to play. That's, I think that's the beauty of the way this game's built is it's there when you need it. But if you're done with it, like I know a couple of my friends just canceled their stuff and uninstalled the game. Cause they're their their time with 14, as far as I can tell is over and that's fine. You know, they can, you know, they're they're They have their games. They still want to play. But I think they'll be back <laughs> at some point, you know, maybe we'll see. But it's just I'm... one of those things of that's I think that's the great thing about the game is it. It allows you to step away. Mm -hmm. No, and that's important. Like I've I've let my uh, sub lapse for a few months over the nine years I've played just because another game was coming out that I really, really wanted to get through first. Oh, so wow. I'd go play another game for like three or four months and then come back to Final so, Fantasy and, you know, it's all good. If you don't mind me asking, when did you start playing 14? I started playing ni over nine years ago. So the end of 2013, beginning of 2014. So like right about the beginning of A Realm Reborn. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. Because I, so I've picked up the game. In, I can tell you because I had a play. I found the PlayStation Store receipt for buying the starter version of the game was May of 2020 is when I first started playing this game. Oh, wow. So I've had it. I've only been playing for a couple of years, and but that's my. I'm terrified to see what my playtime is going to tell me here. <laughs> 186 days. There you go. I, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, I yeah. When I fell off the deep end, and I've told you, I I almost <laughs> exclusively play fourteen. There's a reason. <laughs> wow. No, I I like and don't like that they tell you how much your play time is. <laughs> yeah. No, I can agree with that. There's sometimes where I there's sometimes where I'm like I'll, I'll be on an alt and like oh wow look I've only played like nine days worth wow look at that I'm so new to the game <laughs> and then one of my friends will be like yeah but so how much does your main have and I'm like we don't we don't we don't, we don't talk about them they don't exist right now. <laughs> have you ever faced any negative stereotypes or criticism for being a video game enthusiast? Um. I think so. Yeah. Like anybody growing up, right? Like, you know, especially growing up, my parents a lot were almost things that they bought video game stuff for us, but it, uh, they definitely were one of those people where it's go outside, do something and stuff like that. But eventually I started buying my own because, uh, one of their comments I remember they made was something along the lines of, well, if you don't want us judging or dictating like what you do with it, then, you know, buy it yourself. And mm. every almost from that moment on, every console ever, I think there's been one console that they bought for me ever since then, because I traded in my old one for and they paid the remainder for a Christmas gift to get an X like a Xbox One S, I think it was. And apart from that, my unfortunately two PC setup I have going on right now is it was all bought by my, you know, by myself. And but I think one of those things I ended up doing was, and this is one of the big moments I can recall, was the time I ended up making uh, affiliate on Twitch for the first, when I finally hit that goal and I finally got like my first Twitch payout. Mm -hmm. I showed my parents the receipt of my payout. And it was one of those moments where I, you could see them for have to force themselves to acknowledge that what, that, this is a real thing. Like they can't avert their eyes now because I've made money off of, you know, I've made, you know, not a lot, but I've made <laughs> something right. Mm -hmm. You know, and it got to the point, you know, where, you know, they started to understand and, you know, support it. And I would tell them milestones when I've hit them. And it's been just one of those things of it. it I've at, to the degree too. I've also just, stopped caring to a degree because 
I've met friends. I mean, I'm here because of video games, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, somebody can say what they want uh, about them, but it's, I feel like they're too big to ignore and they've impacted too many people's lives to, to still hold on to these antiquated stereotypes or viewpoints on, on what they are. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you wouldn't have these massive awards or, you know, if video games weren't such a big deal, why would a Microsoft pay how many billions of dollars to acquire, you know, X, you know, you know, how many different companies they've done over the last few years? Like it, mm -hmm. it's just one of those things of, I, I don't know how you can view them negatively still anymore because there's just so much positivity, so much positivity. There we go. I can say the word correctly. And, <laughs> and just general community surrounding the stuff that I don't, I don't know, at least to me, I don't see how you can still sit there and be like, oh, they're for kids or, you know, why don't you go and do something with your, like, yeah. Yeah. No, that is, that is too true. Like back in the day, dad used to tell me I'll never make any money playing video games. But uh, that is that is no longer the truth. And like you said, we can we can physically prove it. So uh, there is definitely a legitimacy and and a mainstream thing yeah. about it now. Right. I mean, hell. Dungeons and Dragons movie. Hello, anybody like <laughs> like player one is based off of video game and, you know, sci fi culture or mm -hmm. um, they made a World of Warcraft movie like the impact is here they made nathan they made a uh a uncharted movie right like it's uncharted tomb raider like how many movies can we start here or video game like tv series can we list off right like it's just too big to hold on to this idea that it's old or that it's it's that you know it's never going to amount to anything because it clearly has How do you balance your time between playing video games and other responsibilities or activities? Awfully. Terribly. <laughs> Fantastic. It's, I, listen, this is one of the answers where I didn't have time. I didn't even have to think about it. I didn't even write anything <laughs> down for notes. I was just like, yeah, nope, it's terrible. Why? Because should I have, should I be going to sleep at normal time of the night? Sure. Because uh, I work a nine to five. However, I could just do that one last or ooh, like one of one of the one of the things that's gotten me a lot is I'm gonna go to bed. Oh look at the Lubor Regine run for Bajja. Okay, let me go let me go get more materials for my relics. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like three in the morning and I go, oops. Oops. Not my bad. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that so much. It's, no, it's it I mean I lately now because of obviously it's one of the things of now having this job and I um with this new job I got a few months ago, I've moved out onto my own. I have my own apartment now and everything. So I've had to, I've had to actually start to try to pull that a little bit back. Like earlier today, it's, I could have started to boot up, played 14 immediately, but it take out the recycling, take out the trash, clean up a little bit. Or um, now because a couple of my friends positively threatened me to make a throne so they could buy me cooking pots and pans so I could cook for myself. <laughs> finally got those in the other day and i finally have started making myself food so it's almost because now i have to like peel back more time to be able to do things to, like, keep yourself life. alive yeah. right well <laughs> by keeping myself oh, listen i used to just buy food i could throw in the microwave right like i'm gonna be I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you i i chose the easy route every time but now i have the option to it's nothing fancy but like i finally made i finally have made uh one of my favorite things I like to make when I was back home, which was just a simple fried egg sandwich. I just cook an egg, throw uh, crushed red peppers on it, throw some cheese on top, um, grab some lunch meat, throw that on the fry the pan for a quick couple seconds to heat it up or, you know, to cook it on either side. And it works wonders, but it's just, it's always been one of those things of it's been the, now that I have the time, I, you know, I'm probably going to be spending a little less playing video games and more trying to find ways to actually cook proper meals instead of 
Oh, I'll just throw this in the microwave and call it a day. <laughs> there you go. Personal growth. Yeah. Can you share a favorite video game memory or experience that has had a lasting impact on you? Oh, God. I might actually have to look at my notes on this one. Um, I have a kind of a more funny one. Uh, so I, I've so my favorite game of all time, and it's the reason why, if you know, it's on one of the tags, it has the last name of a certain Final Fantasy 13 main character. Uh, I love Final Fantasy 13 to death, but I did not actually beat the final boss fight of that game for almost a decade because I struggled with because the first phase of the final boss fight the boss does this thing where it starts to telegraph this attack and it does a lot of damage if you aren't mitigating it properly. And eventually it just stops telegraphing you. So you just kind of have to know when it's about to happen. Um, and I then found out online, I finally stopped putzing around and looked up a guide. And uh, it turns out that once you get to the second phase of the boss, it's susceptible to the uh, casting death on it. And I beat the final boss in a minute and a half. <laughs> I had to get it staggered, cast it, it hit the first time, and I stand, stood there for like I think a solid minute on the like the the like the boss, like I finished the fight screen. And I think the first thing I said was, and I'm gonna go a little further away than like this, is just really <laughs> that's all it took. We're done. Like that's I waited all this time, and it took that long to finish it. <laughs> oh. Humility. Um, it teaches humility. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, God, where am I now? I, um, I also think it's one of those things of... It, it, I've mentioned it, the game before earlier times, but um, playing Persona 5R this year, like... It, that game had such an impact on me that my normal stream time is around we'll say two to four hours kind of give or take depending on what I'm doing on any given day but I also find myself at like eight to ten hour streams on Persona games because of just how invested that story was and how much fun I was having and it was one of those things of that entirety of playing that game to watching my friends pop in chat and say hi and watch me go through this and some of them bailing me out because I'd be like, is this a good move? Should I? <laughs> should I should they learn this? Or should I? No? Yes? No? Help me, please. Um it, it was definitely one of those things of it was one of those where just the impact of just the story, right? Watching that game start to finish and getting to experience it was I actually ended up having to miss my friend and Rigger's streams because. I was playing the game so much that I started to have to actively avoid their streams so I couldn't see spoilers for myself because they were also <laughs> playing the game at the same time. They were away and they were further ahead. So I had to avoid streams for so long that it ended up driving me um, nuts. Um, I also think one of those things of, and it got to the point where uh, my friend would always chuckle every time it happened, but every time we got uh, we would start doing these savage or like I started doing savage raids, even older content, savage raids, and we'd clear a fight. Like, I think it was one of those times of we last year, we cleared five and six and it was such an arduous process that by the time we finally got it done, I was sitting there like, like banging on my desk, like in just in excitement of like, of the fact that we finally did it. Um, wow. That was powerful. Yeah. Another really funny one I just, I wrote down here and I think about it was um, so growing up, we had one of those minivans that had one of those little tiny LCD screens built into it. Okay. So what we would do is we would bring our PlayStation 2 onto road trips and play games on there. And I s still remember this to this day playing like Star Wars Battlefront 2 or a couple other games on there. And it was the funniest. It was some of the <laughs> coolest things ever. Although going back years later, because we still had that minivan, uh, I'd go and I looked at that screen. I'm like, how did I notice any detail on there? That, that, that I think my phone screen is almost the same size as that, TV, that little screen inside of it. 
Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, it was certainly was a will. <laughs> um, How do you see video games continuing to impact your life in the future? In the future. Oh, boy. Um, I feel like especially considering the fact that obviously we're both content creators, right? Like, I, mm -hmm. I don't see it going away at all like i you know i think it's continuing to, it's going to continue to still be uh, i think a major part of my life till i can't physically play video games anymore like i i don't think i'm gonna put a controller down or my mouse and keyboard down till my body physically says no <laughs> i because I, I, I there's just so many good games out there so much so many stories to play or even simple games like uh, what is it? The Story of Seasons games that they've been re-releasing, like Friends of Miller Town, I have on my Switch. Like, there's just so there's so much you can do in video games or experience with video games. Or there is always going to be the fun new party game, or who knows? Whenever the next Final Fantasy MMO comes out, right? I'm naturally going to be progressing to that because then I'll finally have had a 1.0 character. <laughs> you know and it it's gonna be one of those things of I, I i just can't don't know if i could imagine my life without them because it I'd, I'd have to figure out what to do with all this time <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <so funny. laughs> oh wow and and listen i'm not ready for that level of choice paralysis okay i'm gonna stick with the fact that i'm addicted to one mmo and it occupies my time <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. We will leave discussions of Sword Art Online for another time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you think video games have impacted the entertainment industry as a whole? I feel like, I mean, we're perfect examples of, of the impact on the entertainment industry, right? Like, mm -hmm. you, like, let's think of the fact that what youtube used to be popular for was always really funny or you know compilation videos of funny videos on the internet and stuff like that like that's what everyone was looking for or for music videos and stuff mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden once let's play has exploded onto the scene right it massively and it changed the dynamic of what people were looking for on on youtube and then twitch and or i think whatever it used to be beforehand popped on the scene right and all of a sudden now this way of you can now instead of watching recorded video you have live content you can watch someone actively playing through the game right now mm -hmm. right and it i feel like it's it's changed and it's become such a big part of the entertainment industry that i mean we were talking about earlier right like there's movies, TV series. Um, there's just all of these different anim or even anime adaptations of video games where you just can't or you can't deny that the fact that it's found its way into nearly every facet of, of stuff for now. Even I mean, there was the Final Fantasy Uniqlo like clothing line, right? Like it's found its way out into the world where like you know like other shows or other stuff have branded material stuff and also now video games are getting their own clothing lines i have raid jackets from destiny 2 and boots from you know notable <laughs> companies like stuff mm -hmm. like it's just if it's just this one of those things of i know that's part of rehashing an old answer but it's still just one of those things if you can't you like you just look at youtube or look at twitch and just see how many streams are active at any given moment and like how many people are watching those streams right like it it's just it's i it's gonna be here for a long time and i i i feel like it's it's gonna have to take something massive to to cause video games to like lose their impact on entertainment Absolutely. And it, it certainly shifts the dynamic if you have so many people uh, supporting smaller creators, like it's no longer massive Hollywood corporations. It's, right. uh, 
just another person. Yeah. yeah, it's you and me and, you know, it's or, you know, it's sometimes or, you know, it's it's always one of those things of that's that's always been the really cool thing about this stuff is, you know, I have friends who were always, you know, even if I'm streaming, I have tabs open to lurk on friend streams because, you know, I want to support and see everybody I know or just people in general succeed because there's something really cool about watching people hit these goals milestones do this stuff or have something really really cool happen because of that have you ever played a video game that inspired you to pursue a certain career or field of study i i don't think so i guess you could say my passion for like playing racing games and other stuff like that. And just my, what became my fascination in cars caused me to originally get my uh, two year degree in auto body. Uh, <laughs> and then I went to the riveting topic of economics. So you can see how well that worked out. Right. Yeah. So I don't, so personally, I don't know if it has, but a lot of video games have intrigued, like, gotten me really intrigued into certain topics or certain parts of history right or or other things where it's all things of it's got me fascinated in this in a given topic and i'll sit there and like do all sorts of research on it because it's it's this whole new thing that you didn't think about mm -hmm. and it's so really cool to just it so i guess to read it no i don't i don't think it's done anything as part of that but it's definitely one of those things of it it's caused me to look at other topics or look at other possible things of going like oh i didn't even think of that as a option or a choice no that's fair uh how do you think video games can be used as a tool for education or personal development i i feel like there's there the world as a whole is sleeping on using video games as a way to address stuff, right? Like mm -hmm. think of, um, I think what was it? The Stanley parable? Like there's so many puzzle games, right? Where it's like one of those things of like, there's so many skills that video games can teach you or can be used for education, right? Like there's, there's ways to gamify learning there's ways to make it interactable and make it mm -hmm. like i know i haven't played them since i bought them but there's a couple of games i know that are like typing games that like you go through the story and the way you interact with combat and stuff like that is to type out these sentences and words and stuff that come on screen and it's like what a what a perfect way to get people to want to learn is why not make it fun make it interesting especially in a world that has people i feel like me with with attention deficit issues like make it interesting make it something that like is going to make me invested in what i'm doing and not mm -hmm. like bore or not i don't know boring but monotonous or mundane so no, I, I completely agree. And I think I talked about it on, on my last podcast was if someone is willing to invest the time to learn a savage fight, if, if learning another language was as interesting, they are likely to invest the same amount of effort. Absolutely. So. Like if you're telling me, <laughs> if you're telling me like through a savage fight, I learned to speak like German, Japanese, like, like a whole bunch of mm -hmm. different languages. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Like <laughs> I do it in a heartbeat yeah because it's it becomes a fun challenge right it becomes something it, it, there there's a tangible goal there's a tangible way to work through it and you're you're going to learn i feel like it's going to retain so much better mm -hmm. because of that fact I look, hey, I look forward to it. I mentioned it first. Uh, the mm -hmm. first, uh, the first dungeon or raid we have that teaches us German. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh boy. That's gonna be something. Uh, 
Have you ever played a video game that helped you cope with a difficult time in your life? And if so, can you share that experience? So, um, I don't know if it's a specific game, but there's definitely been a lot of times in life where, like, when I lost relatives or loved ones mm -hmm. or something like that, and it's just one of those things of, you know, those weigh on you a lot. And video games were a way for me to either... If it was a story with a you know an impactful story or something like that it would allow me to process those emotions in a very organic way or it would or there are times i know where there are some days where mentally i'm just not 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 good not kosher that day you know fives are off everything no the boxes aren't being checked but i there's a game my friend recommended to me a while ago uh it's just called it's called dorf romantic and it's just a simple game where there's these little hexagon hexagonal tiles and you're just trying to combine them or attach them in certain ways to just 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 a, a score a silly score like there's no tangible reason to do it like it's not like i'm get something cool for achieving a new high score or anything but it's just been one of those games of sometimes it's it just helps me just kind of sit there and just mellow out or, you know, it's just really calming or relaxing. Or I know there's some days where I've picked up even like a power washing simulator. Mm. Because there's, yeah, something, yeah. there's something satisfying about just mm -hmm. looking at the progress you've made because you've cleaned an item or something like that, or you've washed away all of their, like it, there's so many ways where, I've been able to use video games to to help process a lot of stuff. And at the end of the day, I may feel exhausted, but I've worked through whatever it was that that was that was there and I've come out stronger and better. Absolutely. And everything else comes out during like Endwalker credits or during Shadowbringer credits. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. How do you think video games can be used to bring people together and build communities? I feel like my time in 14s, again, to keep referencing mm -hmm. it, because it's it's such a massive part of my life right now. It's I I have how, how many, you know, it's one of those things of I, I have, and this is, a, I think, a great example. I have two people on my friends list that I met because of the fact that there was a specific fate, special fate in, uh, the last area of Endwalker. There's a if you know which one I'm talking about, mm -hmm. uh, where you have to get we have to kill that boss twice to get the, the little TV monitor mount, right? Yep, yep. I have two people on my friends list that I made friends with one day because we were part of what we like to call the hashtag one last kill squad because we were <laughs> trying to get that fate to spawn the entire day and we finally um... did it. And they added me to their friends list and they're like, I feel like we've earned, I feel like we've been through so much together because of this. Um, but no, I feel like video, like from various aspects of 14 to, you know, there's the, you know, there's art communities, there's, you know, savage rating communities, there's just casual content. Like there's so many ways, both 14 or any other game, right? There's JRPG fans. Like I met some people via, or some people popped into my stuff because of the fact that I was playing Persona 5 and it was my first time. And they're like, oh, I want to, I can't wait for you to get further on because there's something I'm waiting to see how you react to. Um, and I, I feel like games, if done right, are have such an organic way to bring people together, whether it's through silly events or like I know mm -hmm. um, Destiny 2, there was a lot of times where I I know they used to do these community events where uh, depending on how many people did certain things, certain things would either unlock sooner or faster. And they got to the point where uh, one of the, like, how so many of the goals got crushed in, like, the first week of it. And it was supposed to go for a while. And they're like, they had to make a tweet out where it's something like, y'all are ridiculous. Like, <laughs> this, you can take your time on this. It's okay. <laughs> But I, especially, I feel like especially MMOs are have such a have such an easy way to bring people together because no matter what, you're going to need to find people to do content with, and 
you're inevitably going to find people that you mesh with and, you know, you can bring them in. And also now you're like, you know, I've found my current group uh, for my, for my static because of the fact that I happened to be somewhere at the right time and they needed one last person for, it was an unsynced EADS and which is uh, Shiva and mm. we got there and apparently uh to this day my our our static leader and one of the other the other healer uh told me the other day they're like i'm still trying to figure out how you flew under the radar for so long <laughs> wow and like it's just it, it shared yeah, the shared passion around video games the communities are going to crop up no matter what like there's it's just mm -hmm. going to be a way it, it it's going life will find its way to build a community somewhere based on something like it i feel like at this point it's more of an inevitability than anything it's yeah just, and it's so comforting like it's something that i didn't have growing up that uh, that maybe things would have been significantly different if i did so right yeah. no absolutely just knowing you're not alone yeah. right and knowing how many times like how much how many people can you can find meet and interact with that can impact your life in ways you would have never mm -hmm. thought of absolutely so have you ever played a video game that challenged your beliefs or worldview? Um, I know we talked about this before we hit record, but there's a lot of it for me has been looking at and viewing or like looking at antagonists or villains and really forcing like forcing myself to sit there and try to understand in their eyes how they view the world right and what's true or looking at their history their past and understanding what drove them to either to this point in time or drove them to think consider what they consider their court certain course of actions as the either the right way the only way or feel like they had no other choice left but to to do stuff um and I think there's another one too where um a game it's another I have it on my list and it's a game I know um there it is um another one that really hit like I feel like maybe this is more towards one of your other questions later on but there's that uh if you know the game Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice it really forces you to look through the eyes of somebody really going through um like some really tough mental challenges and like you kind of have to sit there and really look at and understand that the, to them this is their world this is how they see things um and like I feel like really understanding how different people's views on from the most minute thing to the world as a whole can shift warp or just overall change because of of various like circumstances or, or because of their beliefs they view things a certain way and it's games have always kind of made me sit there and really just take a time to put my, you know, like, you know, like the saying goes, right. Put yourself in someone else's shoes. Right. It's, mm -hmm. I feel like you can come out so much better in life because by putting yourself into that perspective, you may never have ever gotten there. You, you know, maybe you have been lucky enough to have found your way to move yourself off to a different path that would have avoided getting there. But it, I don't know, it still feels like there's so many ways, there's so much to learn still. And there's so many that, and 
allowing myself to have my current views on life and various things to be challenged and change because me now and me what right out of high school or going into high school right around like when halo 3 was popular um would are perfect examples of i'm two very different people mm -hmm. because of both life experiences and my experiences with video games and a lot of them forcing me to kind of really challenge what i know or what i think is either right or what i think is correct um could you imagine if if everyone had that experience in a video game, everyone in the world, and we were all able to apply it to, to real life and be able to say to pretty much anyone, like, hey, Mr. Antagonist, uh, who's right. causing me no end of grief, I, I get where you're coming from. I don't agree with you, but I understand. And, and to be able to start having constructive dialogues as mm -hmm. opposed to like scream fests and, and right. trolling and oh, yeah. No, exactly. And I and that's and I feel like that's how I've always tried to approach things in life is one of those things of you may not like someone's viewpoint on life or someone's the way you know their their viewpoint on a particular mm -hmm. topic. But there's still a way to have either constructive dialogue on something else or you can still view and i feel like that's a big thing is you can still view them as human you can still view them as mm -hmm. a person and that really can help you i feel like it really goes a long way in life because you're now not just immediately shutting something down you're not immediately just nope sorry we're too different this just isn't gonna work it's all right well we may not we'll just agree to disagree here but we can talk about it in a in a constructive manner or you know and there's times where there's a couple of times where i know we engage me and somebody engaged in dialogue and it turns out by the end of the conversation that no we were we were never there was there was like there wasn't going to be much middle ground to be made but mm -hmm. at the end of the time though you were like my the my the other person in the conversation was like i appreciate you engaging in this even if we never ended up agreeing on much of anything it was there was still this level of mutual respect for we just we're just different that way and that's fine yep if the scions could have a conversation with xenos <laughs> like you can have a conversation with anyone Right. It... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> How do you think video games can be used to promote empathy and understanding of different perspectives? So this is really similar to where we were just at, but... Mm -hmm. I... I feel like if done right, you'll sit there and like we've talked about several times now, right? It's one of those things of, I may not agree with the way this character is acting or their choice of or their their method of rectifying things but at the end of the day i can see what's pushed them like i know one of the characters i spoke of earlier was like uh yotsu from stormblood right like my initial impression was i hated her guts i mm -hmm. did not like her at all but as time went on and as I played through the story again, I started picking up on these things and paying attention. And now it's like, I can see what pushed you so far that this seems acceptable or like that you mm -hmm. viewing the world or viewing your fellow domains in this light because they cast you out. They threw you aside. Like I can understand why all of a sudden now you there'd be not an ounce of remorse or why you just be like this is just i am just redressing the balance of mm -hmm. of what happened to me but i i definitely feel like if done like i said if done right and characters designed well you can absolutely really cause people to to be more empathetic to somebody in, say, 
you know, you could have a game where somebody's maybe a little more impoverished than you are, or they're just born into a different climate, like a, you know, just social climate than you are. And you really have to sit there and you can't like, sure you could exit the game, but like you can't, while you're in the game, you really have to sit there and take in what life is like for them and what, difficulties and complications they it, that that gives them right it i feel like more games need to make not necessarily make things super uncomfortable but make things more uncomfortable right like make things really kind of force people to kind of get a little uncomfortable and really push that 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 safety net that they that we all like to sit in just that little bit further and just try to change challenges themselves just a little bit more on either what they know or what they, you know, what they feel like is, is the thing. Yep. No, absolutely. Remember gamers hurt people, hurt people. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I'm going to save the rest of what I was going to say for another question that I know is upcoming too, but um. Have you ever played a video game that you felt had a particularly impactful story or message? Um, I feel like just because I don't want to keep using the same games. Uh, I think the idea of like I love the story of Final Fantasy XIII because I like the fact mm -hmm. that the main character's sister, right? This all starts because the main character's sister gets sucked into this giant epitaph thing, and then gets branded as a lassie and then in their efforts to save her all of these other people two people directly involved because you have snow and lightning but then you have all these other people who through no fault of their own get dragged into this whole thing and now they're all branded this way and they're branded as enemies through no fault of their own right like mm -hmm. they're they're still people but because they have this brand on them now they're now viewed as the enemy of this world that they've lived in all their life. And it showed you how to, you know, that there's still ways to challenge your fate and that there's, you can turn things around, right? Like with, I, I also feel like a lot of games that have it like impact, particularly impactful stories of with the messages, of like found family and stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause there's a lot of times yeah. where I feel like, my current friend groups, there's a couple of my friend groups who I almost feel a stronger connection to than my own family because of the fact that like there's these ties that I've had and I've developed over the years that are so much stronger because of all these shared experiences I have with them. Um, but I know, and it's I'm going to reiterate a game again, but uh, first I was talking about earlier, but Persona 5 Royal, you want to talk about a, a game that had an impactful story? It that game had me in its grips till the end of until I beat that story 120 hours later. <laughs> it wow. it was so. And again, it was one of those things of the main character of that one, right? Originally is branded a, a, a criminal to put on like probation. And you see them through the game and the whole persona medium begin to challenge this fate of theirs and change their outcome of of life like you know it's one of those things that they they and find a collection of friends like really really close-knit friends as a result and that was always really really cool um i also yeah. feel like every expansion of 14 could have how many different messages right it's right like, <laughs> No, two uh, things. I yeah. one, I love to see the Final Fantasy 13 love. I don't think Final Fantasy 13 gets enough credit, but I really I enjoyed that. Feel, game. I feel like <laughs> 13 as a as a massive 13 fan, I can completely understand people's dislike mm -hmm. of the way certain things are. And compared to other games, I can understand like I I'm not gonna sit here with rose tinted rose tinted glasses and tell you no, the game's perfect, nothing's wrong. Right. But 
that game that game is one one of the i think the one of the only games in the entire final fantasy series like collection as a whole to have three games mind you not two like some games do this game has three right there's 13 13 2 and lightning's return uh but it has how many different game systems right like the first two games are more same but more streamlined and then the third one has a whole entire like battle dress system not similar to 10 2 right where depending on what gear you have equipped it changes or i mean you can think of that with like 14 too it's it what gear you have changes what job you're doing and what skills you have available to you and i also really thought the different ways each of the games in that series handled their story was also really really cool because and this was something i saw a while ago and i never found the article again and it drove me nuts but somebody want i remember seeing something somewhere once where somebody said to think you look through the, the look at the final fantasy the first final fantasy 13 story through the eyes of a action movie like a non-stop thriller and i feel like that game once I heard that, it was like a it was like a complete game changer in my mind how I perceive that story because it's just an action thriller. It's a nonstop action story, you know. And those it's, those stories aren't going to really give you time to sit there and process things. Like, yeah, there's going to be a bit of lull here and there, right? Where, but it by and large, it's just go, 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 don't stop. Um, and thirteen two had the system where you could with a certain thing later you get later on it could lock you you could you could view alternative timelines on certain parts of the story or certain endings and you could see what would be different or um i know during one during the normal playthrough you avert a fight but in the alternate version you they basically fight a sea of like alexanders till the end of time like if they because 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 you what you did changed, you didn't avoid this. You know this this right. crisis wasn't averted, and now they spend like the rest of their time fighting this impossible fight. Till I think I think the way it is is I think inevitably either they win or they are it's I can't remember if they win or lose, but it's all things of like it's just basically it just goes on ad infinitum, and then um lightning's return has the 13 day the final 13 days of the world and depending on when you do certain things certain things are either easier or harder or sometimes you just can't do certain parts of the story because you missed the window to do it and it's so i don't know it's so cool to think about that this game has such a wide ranging ways of storytelling Mm -hmm. I could talk about that game forever. <laughs> <laughs> Point number two. I haven't forgotten that this was a two-part thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard a lot of positive feedback about Persona 5, but I haven't played any of the Persona games. Now, can you come right in at that point? Or do you yes, need like... actually, and that's so perfect example. Uh, I was looking at wanting to play the Persona games because they were starting to get added to Xbox Game Pass. Mm -hmm. And I have that. And I was like, what game should I start? And my friends were like, start with Persona 5. Because Persona 5 is a fantastic jumping in point for, because mm -hmm. that was my first game. And now I understand it. And I could probably start going back to the older games. And I'll have an understanding of the confidant system and, and the way personas work and what skills work here or there. Like it, There's so many different ways to do it. But I feel like Persona 5 is a fantastic jumping in point for people knew to persona as a whole plus you get especially with royal you get so much content um one of the really really cool things about and i don't know if it's true in the other games but uh with persona 5 royal or persona 5 in particular um certain outfits change the music in battles mm -hmm. So um, there was a specific, I think it's the Starlight outfit, or there's one specific outfit I used to do because it always starts with this really jazzy song. It's like starts with like a, um, I 
would sing it right now if I could do it, but uh, it, it just it has such a cool theme and it changes to me. I feel like it changes the entire way you handle fights because you have all this music <laughs> like normal, normal mob battles changes. It changes stuff, but it's I don't know. It's such a. All right, I'm going to have to great. check it out. Please, please do. I could not recommend that game more. Awesome. No, I know I jumped into The Witcher at Witcher 3 and and I did not uh I did not mind that at all. Uh That's going back and playing play. 1 and 2 afterwards, I'm like, okay, maybe I'm I'm glad I started at 3. But Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How do you think video games can be used to address social or political issues? I feel like putting it into games much like the way it's sometimes put into other media, right? It, I feel like it kind of forces you to confront that that particular topic or issue, right? Because it's now everywhere, right? The topic's in the news, it's in the movies, it's in now in your video game. like. And I feel like either you can continue, you know, it's continue to run away from it or take it head on right there and let it let it challenge what you are the way you view a certain social issue or the way you view a certain political issue it it i feel like done right video games could be such an impactful medium to change you know you could do you could do what if scenarios right you could do a situation where there's branching timelines and stories where you know, depending on which way you decide to do a certain thing, you can see where that action domino affects to later consequences or later benefits, right? Like there's no telling what that choice will have, but by showing that you made this choice to do it this way, and now the story's gone to here, you kind of can't avoid it anymore. Like you kind of have to, I feel like it's almost like you kind of have to sit there and really take, you know, take to heart what, what the actual impact of that is, because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of so many times in life, a lot of people's things is this has nothing to do with me till it affects them. And then the second it affects them now, they're like, oh, well, let me learn up, lead up on this and learn it. It's just like. Had you just cared to begin with, we wouldn't you wouldn't have taken this long to get there. Um like I feel like to some degree there's only so much advocating for things or you know, getting up on a metaphorical soapbox and talking about a particular issue you can do till you kind of put it in a way where somebody can't turn it down or can't walk away from it and really just kind of like I said it's just really forced to to you know really think about what's what's happening in the world or what you know what potential impacts a certain decision could have on people yeah no, for sure and this was the question I wanted to discuss more earlier because of what you were saying which is um, it, video games addressing social or political issues takes the the raw emotion of of a of reality out of it. Mm -hmm. So it's no longer about oh well this person who was abused or this person who was misquoted or this mm -hmm. person who probably was wrong, and it's an example of a person we have an omniscient history of. Um, so we're able to make like a completely unbiased opinion on whether it feels right or feels wrong. Um, which is just huge for having these conversations. I'm trying to see here if I can look up because there's I brought up the game earlier and I was mm -hmm. trying to see if I could get its story. Um oh so um so that Hellblade game, uh I was just looking it up, but apparently it's Korea it was created in collaboration with neuroscientists and people who experience psychosis. So you want to talk about a perfect game that helps address mm -hmm. mental health issues, right? Mm -hmm. Like this game, you get to see from someone's perspective who is suffering through something like that and really see what effect it has on how they perceive 
the world and how 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 things how something maybe it could have been minute to you all of a sudden massively changes the way they see something and it i feel like if done right it can really get people to care mm -hmm. about that stuff and really get people to be like no we need to we need to tackle this now or it's just gonna get worse or it's just gonna be a problem that continues to get kicked down the road with no real solution in sight meanwhile people are dealing with these issues in maybe not the most healthy ways because that's the only option left to them absolutely so. Have you ever played a video game that you felt had a positive impact on your mental health or well-being? So again, this may may tie in, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I again, I there's fourteen has had such a, a positive impact on on my mental health because I've found my friends, I've found I've found these things I can be passionate about again um like this i got emotional over the fact that one time i won a glamour so there was a, a a couple friends of mine did an art party and in the art party was a themed glamour contest mm -hmm. i ended up winning that contest and when they announced it it i took several seconds to process the fact that mm -hmm. in the say chat my name specifically was dropped and i went Oh, and it, it was one of those things of I was so ecstatic for that entire rest of the night. I was on cloud nine because I had had somebody, you know, it was recognition of time I put into, you know, it was proof that I, you know, I guess to some degree, I make good outfits in, in 14 <laughs> and, you know, and ever since then i've just been known as as the de facto like glamour person to my friends and to the point where some of them have been like i need help and several of them have glamours on right now that i have a direct influence on or created entirely from scratch can i can i ask can i ask uh mm -hmm. the glamour guru uh what is your number one glam tip if you were to give everyone watching right now a tip like i feel like it's one of those things of never like be try to be open-minded on what you're using because there's been so many times where or a or uh i feel like something that either some people know about or maybe know about but they never have used look up a Rosia collection if you never have mm -hmm. because i have used when i've been stumped on because i you know i've made like i said earlier i've made 160 different outfits eventually sometimes the creative juices run a little dry or you're hitting a roadblock and your brain is just not not connecting two and two together right uh i think there was one time where i had a specific glam piece and i'm like i want to make an output of this but i can't for the life of me think of everything else mm -hmm. and i so i searched up glams using that specific top uh, chest piece and then found one and then took that and changed because it gave me something to work off of and then right. i took it and just ran with and changed enough of it to make it my own um that's one of those things if you're ever stumped look there i also feel like it's one of those things of if you really like a glamour you're really proud of it use it wear it like you know at the end of the day, the, you know, I may be somebody who's constantly seeking attention with mine, maybe, but I feel like as long as you, you sit there at the end of the day and go like, I, yep, this is my outfit. I'm really proud of what I did with it. Then, you know, kudos to you. Also, um, 
I know it's one of those things that I've thought of a lot when working on Glamours is there's a art rule. I think it's like the rule, of like it's like three, it's like to limit it to like three different types of colors on any given palette. So it's one of those things I've really tried to look at what, you know, um, are you trying to focus on certain accent colors or do you need it? Do you need the main part of something to dye a certain way? Because there's been times where I've had several different items for like three different gear sets, but their accent colors match almost so perfectly that I could use my dyes to then dye the base part of it to match almost perfectly that unless you zoom in, you're not going to see the color difference. Um, or, so you know, if you want to have a fun challenge with yourself, mm -hmm. think of a theme. Like, pick a, a like, you know, I want to make, you know, like one of my glams I made recently for my paladin was like almost the exact opposite of what a paladin looked like. Like, it looked like a glam more built for a dark knight than for, for a paladin. But I like that because it broke with what your normal viewpoint on a paladin is it looked more sinister like it almost could have been like an oathbreaker paladin or um uh, some of my fun is making really casual looking glams that can look good on any character on any different job because it's just universal um universal pieces so how excited are you on a scale of one to ten about two die channels terrified <laughs> like 15 out of 10 on the excitement 20 out of 10 on the terrified scale because oh. uh we have determined that i'm probably not going to be seen once that comes out because i'm going to go back through <laughs> to all the glams Everything, i have pictures yeah. of which i almost <laughs> i almost could show you here actually because i could switch swash to a different scene i think and uh here you go Here's a perfect list of, uh, can you tell how uh, addicted I am to taking screenshots of my glams? That's pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> that's, that's, um, that's my entire folder of, and that's at least just what's on this computer, because I know I have some other ones elsewhere. Um, I was wondering if I could show you that out. Because I know I have it somewhere in here. There's that outfit I that I won the competition with. I am sometimes it's really hard to look through all this. Ah, there it is. There was one of them. Oh wow! And that's the other thing too is if you if you really like glams, find cool set pieces to take them in because there's some there's so many dungeons where like uh for example here's oh not that one i mean there's that one too which is from uh one of the shadow ring and one of the end of the base shadow bringer dungeons um but there was another one here like this one because i use uh the nidhog cane so I popped to the Nidhogg trial and just took a picture with him in the background. Oh, it wow. there's so there's so many places where you can really sit here and like um uh dusk vigil I want to say mm -hmm. one of those dungeons, but it's like there's so much opportunity for to really create a story or 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 just to really it, drive home what feeling you have with a particular glam or idea in the game with that uh, but this this glam in particular is one of the first ones I'm going to redo Oh well, is that is, uh, uh, is that Dalex rope? Yes, it's one of the ones from PPP and I I I love that glam to death. It's what oh, Here's one of my favorite pictures I think I ever took of that one. Um, this one, actually, funny enough, it's a perfect example where I talked about create a theme or an idea. Um, mm -hmm. A friend of mine, 
challenged me to create a glam based on the theme of their VTuber model, which was a forest goddess. So I crafted this one. Um, so the game within the game. <laughs> when they say glamour is the true end game, uh, they are in fact not lying. <laughs> awesome. Well, that is all my questions for today. Is there anything else you wanted to share with us? Uh, no, just thank you for letting me be a part of this. Like I, you know, it's kind of one of those things of like I like I told you at the beginning, I kind of was like just threw my hat in the ring and just I was like, I wasn't sure if I was gonna actually expect an answer anywhere. Awesome. Um no, it's been fantastic having you. So if anyone wanted to go check you out on your home turf, where would they find you? So tip, I almost obviously stream exclusively on Twitch at twitch.tv slash 17 uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Fridays, where I'm pretty much playing Final Fantasy 14. And I can almost guarantee you at some point, something absolutely stupid will come out of my mouth and I will probably cause a wipe somewhere because we're dying of laughter. <laughs> awesome that's the best kind well thank you so much again for joining me today of course thank you so much for having me it's been a pleasure uh yeah that's all we have for today gamers thank you so much for joining look forward to the next episode next saturday and i will see everyone in game bye